What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode. I hope you guys are enjoying your last weekend of the summer. Uh, we still got four more days left, so uh, I don't even want to think of school yet. But what I do want to think about is the start of the 2019-2020 NHL season. It's going to be a crazy year. I'm so excited with the parody of the league, with the question marks surrounding some of the RFAs. It's going to be an awesome year. What also is not going to be so awesome though, it could be the Edmonton Oilers season. I don't know how it's going to go. There's still a lot of question marks, a lot of problems with the Oilers roster. Today we're going to kind of break down the roster, break down what's going on with Jesse Pogliarvi, you know, see what Connor McDavid has to do to get this team to the playoffs and see if Ken Holland can turn over the team. If you guys are looking forward to the episode, if you guys are looking forward to the episode, make sure to drop a like at the bottom of the screen. Then you let your friends know about the channel. Uh, and if you guys are looking forward to, you know, my predictions and my fantasy video, which will come uh, in a couple days or a couple weeks, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well. Without further ado, guys, let's get into the episode. The Edmonton Oilers I wouldn't call them a dumpster fire because I keep that phrase specific specifically for the Ottawa Senators, um, but it's kind of been a disaster the last couple years. When you've got two guys over 100 points and one guy who scored 50 goals for the first time since 2012 that's not named Alex Ovechkin, you should be in the playoffs, but unfortunately... It's not the case with the Edmonton Oilers. Again, that's two two years where they missed the playoffs. They made it, I believe, three years back. They made it to the second round of the playoffs, lost to the uh, the Anaheim Ducks, and then the following year, people predicted them to you know make the Cup final, make great runs, be the top of the Pacific. It never happened. That was their only good year, really. Uh, and obviously, looking at their roster, you can kind of tell why. I don't even know how they made it that far. I guess great years from Cam Talbot, the excitement of Connor McDavid, Drysaddle had a solid year. Uh, I, gu- I guess some pieces did come together. Lucic, uh, that was his Lucic's first year, I believe, as well. He was okay in his first year. So, again, the Oilers, uh, they got a lot of things happening for them that year that just really didn't continue the last couple years now. Jesse Pugliarv, he drafted fourth overall in 2016. He's been the topic uh, surrounding the Edmonton Oilers for the last couple weeks now. He's playing in Europe uh, until, well, he signed a one-year contract in Europe, if you guys didn't know, but he can opt out of the deal uh, until December 1st if he does sign a contract in the National Hockey League by that time. So he played in his first game today. He scored a goal. I don't know if he scored any more. I just saw he scored in his first two minutes playing in Europe. So maybe that will increase his trade value. I don't quite know. But uh, I guess for the Oilers, they hope it does. They got to hope that Pugliarvi really tears it up in Europe because his trade value is at an all-time low right now. I mean, what team's going to want to pay pay a first round pick and a top nine forward for a player that's barely cracked 10 points. I mean, you don't. Who's going to do that? Even, I guess, the auto Senators aren't dumb enough to do that. Okay, I'm just ripping in the Senators right now. Um, the Pugliarvi, again, drafted fourth overall in 2016. People were shocked when the Blue Jackets picked Pierre-Luc Dubois. I guess it's looking like the right pick right now, but you can't even fault the Edmonton Oilers for picking Pugliarvi fourth because every scout had Pugliarvi as the third best prospect. So of course they're going to pick him. I just think it's their development system and they've ruined just so many prospects. They're hoping, I, I guess I hope, I hope for their sake that they don't ruin Yamamoto, Bouchard, and Broberg because they do have some solid prospects down there that Ken Holland again just drafted this year and Broberg and Lavoie uh, and then Bouchard could step in the lineup as soon as the season. So I hope for Oilers sake that those prospects do do okay. There's got to be a team out there right now that's going to be interested in Jesse Pugliarvi. Uh, what they wanted, I heard, was a top nine forward and a first round pick. Um, a top nine forward that can make a difference right now and can produce in the NHL at this moment because Pugliarvi is just not being able to do that. I don't even know if he's cracked 10 points with the Oilers, which is awful. It's terrible for a fourth overall pick. So again, that's what they're looking for, Pugliarvi. I don't know if a team would be willing to give up a first round pick just because uh, whoever they draft with that first round pick will most likely have more upside than a guy like Jesse Pugliarvi. I still think there is some potential with Jesse Pugliarvi right now. Again, he was a fourth overall pick. He should be okay. Again, it might just be the Oilers, you know, development program rooting him again and, you know, maybe going to another team will help. I mean, maybe you just need to change of scenery. That's what I think it is. I think he'll still be a solid middle six winger for whatever team does achieve him. I don't think he's going to be what people thought he was going to be, but I think he'll be a solid middle six winger and uh, I guess he just needs a chain of scenery right now and there's zero chance he's sticking with Edmonton. Some more bad news, in my opinion, with the Edmonton Oilers is that... Zach Cassie and Alex Chason both had career years last year. They both scored over 20 goals. You know, from advanced analytics and, you know, their past, there's almost 
zero chance that, especially there's almost zero chance that Zach Cassian repeats 20 goals. Maybe Alex Chason, he was supposed to be pretty good. They acquired him, he had a really good season, 21 goals, but Zach Cassian, that's just not his game. He's a fast player, but he's not a finisher, and 20 goals for Cassian, I think it's out of the picture this year, so they got to hope that some of your younger players like Yamamoto can step up this season and do something. They tried out Kaylee Yamamoto last year with McDavid, and it just didn't work. I don't think he was ready. Thank goodness they sent him down because I do not want the Edmonton Oilers ruining, yet, ruining Yamamoto like they've done with other players. Uh, so they sent him back down. I think he should be ready this year. He's fast. He's got so much skill that you know if they do pair him with Connor McDavid, I think that could be a fantastic pa uh, tandem. Also, they acquired James Neal for Milan Lucic, which I think was actually a really good trade. And I'm actually going to give the Oilers a lot of praise here. I think that was a perfect trade for the Oilers. I mean, he had one bad year. I still think he can repeat that. Uh, Lucic is just too slow. Neal is pretty slow too, but at least Neal, you know, he can really finish. He's more of a finesse player than Lucic was. So, well, I mean, Lucic, those guys usually kind of die out earlier. James Neal, he should still have uh, so a couple of goals left in the tank. I think a 20-goal year is not out of the equation for James Neal, especially if you pair him with McDavid. The Edmonton Oilers definitely have a lot of options um, to play on that right wing on the first line with McDavid and Dreisaitl. You could do um, you could do Yamamoto, you could do James Neal, like I said, or you could even do Nygaard, who they signed from Europe, who could definitely be a 40 to 50 point scorer if he's playing in the right role. Uh, I think he could t potentially play with McDavid. Um, one thing I've seen with Crosby that I haven't seen as much of from McDavid is Crosby's definitely make Made, made players around him better 100%. I haven't quite seen that with Connor McDavid. We'll see if it happens this season with whoever they pair uh, pair him with, but obviously Dreisaitl 67 of his 105 points came from McDavid, so I can't really argue too much, but that's just kind of what I've seen. Crosby 100% makes players better. I haven't quite seen that at the same level with McDavid, but uh, we'll see this season how he does or how the other players do with him. Whoever they pair him with, they've got options, or they could stick with Zach Cassian. They better hope that one of those players is able to stick and contribute every night offensively. On the second line, you know, you've got OK. You might have the best second line center in the league with Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Uh, again, and James Neal, you've got a lot of options to play up and down the lineup. Not a lot of great options. I think a lot of options that you hope turn out, and that's not always great uh, if you're in that situation. On the defense, you've got Oscar Clefbaum, Adam Larson, Darnell Nurse, Evan Bouchard, Chris Russell, and Matt Benning. The bottom two, definitely not the strongest. It's pretty weak. Maybe those some of the weakest in the Pacific Division. Uh, and then the top four, you've got a lot of average defensemen. Clefbaum, Larson, and Nurse. Maybe Nurse is a bit above average. I could say you could potentially throw him on the top line, but there's no number one defenseman out of those four. The one guy I do see that could really change things here is Evan Evan Bouchard. He was the 10th overall pick in 2018. This guy almost stepped into the lineup last year, I think, and uh, obviously he wasn't quite ready. It's good that they didn't rush him again last year, but this year he'll definitely be ready, and I think you know, even if he's, he could potentially play on the first line this year, I think he's that good, and he could definitely make a massive difference. If he plays up to expectations, he could really help the Oilers make the playoffs, but again, his expectations are very high right now. I don't know if he's going to be able to reach those, um, and I think he'll be a good, solid, you know, second period defenseman this year and be a number one defenseman, you know, maybe even the following year. Uh, Bouchard will be a number one defenseman in the future, but not quite yet, but I think he can make a massive difference for the Edmonton Oilers defense. And and finally, in goal, we've got Miko Koskinen uh, and Mike Mike Smith. Obviously, Koskinen um, they signed or Shirelli signed to like just a crazy deal in his first couple games. Like, what goes here through? I think Shirelli might have had might have known that he was going to be fired at that point, and he just made wanted to make the second or the next GM uh, who's going to be after him. I think he just wanted to make him go through the most pain because that contract that should never happen. Every fan would never do that in my, like, nobody would do that. He's played, like, 40 games, and you're going to sign him to that big contract. After the All-Star break, Koskinen's performance just dipped. It wasn't great, and I think, you know, it might have come down to luck at the first or adrenaline from joining the NHL. Now, he's just gone down the drain in the second half. I think Oilers and Oilers fans, you better hope that Koskinen turns out to be his first half self next year. And even then, the contract might be a bit pricey. Mike Smith, his best days are definitely behind him. Imagine he wasn't great in Calgary with the 
one of the best defense uh, defense cores in the league. Imagine what he's going to be like with Edmonton, where you know you have some of the most shots in the National Hockey League. His performance, I think, is going to be even worse, and I don't think he's going to stick as a top two goaltender in Edmonton. So all of uh, Edmonton Oilers, um, all their eggs are in one basket with Koskinen. They better hope that turns out because you got no solid players in the AHL. I mean, maybe a Bennington situation happens there. That will be asking a lot, but uh, you got to hope that Miko Koskinen turns out to be, I uh, know, his first half self, and Shirelli turns out to be a genius, which we really haven't seen in the last couple years. Now, imagine the Oilers, you know, didn't make, didn't ruin all those prospects and didn't make all of those, you know, crappy trades. What would their top nine look like right now? We've got Dreisaitl, McDavid, Yakupov, Hall, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Jesse Pugliarvi, and Yamamoto, X whoever and Jordan Eberle. Now that could be that would be the best top nine in the National Hockey League. That would be better than the Edmonton Oilers. Let's go player by player here. Obviously, Drysaddle McDavid. They've got nothing to prove. They're already over 100 points. Neil Yakupov. So remember when this guy was supposed to be the next big thing? He was supposed to be you know a 90 point score, maybe even a 100 point score. I don't know if it just ended up him being a bust or it was the Oilers that ruins him. Maybe a mix of both. Uh, I I. I, I swear that in those last couple of years, he was close to a 30-goal season when he wasn't playing on Edmonton. I don't know. I got to look how he's doing in the KHL too because I'm kind of interested to see how he's doing there. But I think it was a mix of both of him just being a bust and the Oilers just ruining him. On the second line, Taylor Hall we know as a 90-point player, Hart Trophy winner. Ryan Eugene Hopkins, first overall pick. He was supposed to be you know, a first-line center. He's turned out to be a really good second-line center, but not what people expected him to be. And then Jesse Pugliarvi, we know he was supposed to be a fan fantastic player as well. We've already talked about him. And then on the third line, Kaylee Yamamoto, you know, you could pretty much put anybody in the third line. You could put Marcus Granlin, who they already have now, and Jordan Eberle. Again, Eberle, probably another horrible trade for the Oilers. Jordan Eberle for Ryan Strom. Strom's not even on the Oilers anymore. That was a disaster. Eberle's at least a 30-goal scorer in Edmonton, uh, sorry, in New York uh, with, for the Islanders. So again, that would have been one of the best top nine in the league. And, you know, just past GMs and Shirelli and whoever have kind of ruined it. So again, I feel bad for kind of pointing that out. I like the Oilers personally, despite what I've said about them in this episode. I was cheering for them in the playoffs a couple years ago, and uh, unfortunately, they just haven't been able to get back there. For the Oilers fans and for Connor McDavid's sake, I hope they make the playoffs this year. I don't expect it to happen this year. Maybe the following year when Bouchard and Yamamoto and Broberg can all make those big next steps. But uh, honestly, we're looking too far in the future. We got to focus on this year and focus on what the Oilers are going to get for Jesse Pugliarvi. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like at the bottom of the screen if you enjoyed the episode. Let me know your thoughts down below uh, on you know what I thought of the Edmonton Oilers. Do you think they're going to make the playoffs? What do you think the Oilers are going to get for Jesse Pugliarvi? And do you think there's even a chance Connor McDavid gets traded? Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next episode.